the new equal sign pivot by function in Excel, I think finally can replace the pivot tables because the pivot tables can help us to assess the data, to create analysis. And here through the pivot table, I have two different analyses that I can replicate using the new pivot by function. So let's take a look here on those two different analyses that I have. The first one, I have each one of the products and also the total sold per product. And in the second analysis, I have again, each one of the products that I have, but at this time, the total quantity sold per product and per region. Now we all know that a pivot table in Excel can easily help us to create analysis because we just need to take here the options, click, hold and drag, and then drop in each one of the fields that we have. And that's it. Very simple to create analysis in Excel using pivot tables. But now let's go back to the report that I have, and we're gonna use here the pivot by function to help us create analysis like we can do using pivot tables. So let's see if the pivot by function in Excel can really replace the pivot tables. And before we get started, I reckon it's very important to have a data set because from the data set, we can create analysis. We can assess the data. Here as the data set, I have a sales report with order ID, date, brand name, product name, quantity, total cost, total price, margin, customer name, and also the region. So let's say I want to create some analysis here, such as maybe what is the total price sold or what is the total sold? I can take the column G and sum and add up all those values. And that way I'm going to have the total sold. And to do this calculation, I can use the sum function. But if I want to make it more specific, such as what is the total sold per product? Now we're going to need to have more dexterity to solve this question. And if I want to make it more specific, what is the total sold per product per brand, for example? and per region. Now we have a problem because we have too much going on here. The pivot tables in Excel can really help us with this question, let's say. But instead of using pivot tables in Excel, we can use the pivot by function. Uh, here in any cell to the right, I'm gonna equal sign and then pivot by, double click, one, two, to select. The pivot by function has eight different arguments. Row fields, column fields, values, functions, field headers, row total def, row sort order, column total def, column sort order, and filter array. Let's take a look in each one of those different arguments that we have within the pivot by function and see how those different arguments can help us. Let's start with the row fields. And here in the rows fields is basically the information that I want to appear in each one of the rows. So let's say in each one of the rows, I want to have a product name. So I just need to select here the products that I have like this. Now I'm going to press comma to move to the second argument. And here I have column fields. What is the information that I want to have in each one of the columns? Uh, maybe I don't want to use the columns for now. So let's skip this option. Comma again. As the values, I want to know the total sold. So let me select here the total price. And remember, it's very important to match the ranges. So if I just select this range right here as the products, uh, let's say I didn't select here the headers. I also need to match the second range in the, in the values. So I don't need to select the headers. Now let me press here comma again, and uh, what is the function or what is the calculation that I want to, to do with the data that I have? An addition, an average, a count, a max, mean function. I want to use, let's say, a sum. Double click, one, two to select. And I think for now it's okay. So let me close parentheses and then press enter. Here I already have the first analysis where I can see each one of the products that I have and also the total sold for each one of the products. So this is how we can use the pivot by function. And uh, if I take a look here in the pivot table that I have, I can see that the information is pretty much the same. I have the same structure, the products, and also the total sold for each one of the products. The same as I did here with the pivot by function. You can also increase a little bit the outcome. Just click, hold, and drag to the right to make sure we can see properly everything that is within the cells. Okay, now it's good. Now we can move on and see how can we use more arguments within the pivot by function. Double click here, one, two, select. As the row fields, let's say I want to use the products again. Comma. But uh, this time, as the columns, I don't want to skip this option. I want to use as the columns, maybe the region, because I want to separate, to sever each one of the values in a different region. Joma, the values I want to use, maybe the total price again, and comma, and the function lets you sum, just to be able to compare both of analysis that we are creating here. Sum, once you, and then close parentheses. Let's press enter. And here we're going to have, again, each one of the products, but at this time, the values is going to be separate in each one of the regions, east, north, south, and west. And here in the last column, I have the grand total. And as you can see, the totals is going to match 
with the previous analysis that I did. Now let's go back here to the pivot by function, one, two, to open this function. And let's see what we have here as the, the arguments, because we are missing some arguments. Let me read it off the last parentheses and then comma. Now I'm gonna have the field, field headers. And here basically I can add or not the titles of this analysis. So I can use no, yes, but don't show, no, but generate, or yes and show. I'm gonna maybe use no, or I can basically skip using Joma again to skip this option. As a row total def, I can use grand totals, grand and subtotals, no totals, grand totals at the top, and grand and subtotals at the top. Basically, as you can see here, in the last row, I have the total. I can read off this option, or I can keep this option, and I can also add subtotals, grand totals, and on and on. I don't want to change this option right here, so again, I can skip this one. Now, the one that I like the most here is the row sort order and also column sort order because we can sort the information from A to Z or Z to A. And I, as you can see here, we always going to have in the standard way from A to Z. But I can change. Instead of using one, that is the standard, standard one from A to Z, I can use negative one or minus one. That is from Z to A. So I'm going to keep minus one. Now, column total def, we're going to have, again, basically the same options as before, but instead of F as the criteria, the rows, we're going to have the columns as the, the criteria. So I can use totals or not. I'm going to just skip this option because I don't want to use or any other words. Let's press comma here. I don't want to change the standardness of this analysis. I just don't want to change the totals. So comma, now column sort order. And again, as we did before to the row sort order, we can sort the columns from A to Z or from Z to A. Here I'm going to do again minus one, negative one, to sort the columns from Z to A. Basically, we're going to invert the rows using negative one. But I, I'm going to keep negative one just to change things a little bit here. Choma. And finally, the last argument, the filter array. I'm going to skip this one. Let's read it off the last comma because I'm going to talk about the filter array in just a moment. Okay, so close parentheses and then enter as you can see basically the only thing that we changed here is the order of the columns or the rows and also the columns and before we go to the filter array let me select here this first data that i have but i want to read it off the total because i want to create a chart here in excel an interactive chart so double clicking the first cell once you to open the pivot by function let's read it off the last parentheses comma filter headers let's skip comma Row total def, I want you to show no totals. So I want you to use zero, one, two as the option. Close rents and then enter. As you can see, now we have the data with no totals. And I want to select everything that I have here. And then I go to insert. And I want you to use maybe a column chart like this one right here. And as I said before, it's a dynamic and interactive chart. Because whenever we change the data that we have in the data set, the pivot by function is going to automatically be updated for us, whereupon the chart also is going to be automatically updated for us. So take a look here. Let's take maybe creatine in a, or I'm going to take vitamin C. So vitamin C is right here and uh, vitamin C is right here. I'm going to increase here the total price for a ridiculous number such as 99999. OK, like this. I'm going to press enter. Look what's going to happen here with the vitamin C in the analysis and also with the chart. So enter. As you can see now, the vitamin C is ridiculous large compared to the other values that we cannot even see properly anymore. And uh, here we can also see that the value increased a lot. Let's press here Ctrl Z to undo the action. And OK, so this is how we can couple a chart with the pivot by function in Excel. Now let's talk about the last argument that we have in the pivot by function. That is the filter array. How can we use this option? I'm going to double click again here one, two in the pivot by function. And I'm going to read off the last parentheses. Comma. Let's see how can we use here the filter array. And uh, as the name suggests, it's basically a filter for the array, for the range. So as I'm using here all the products that I have, such as omega-3, creatine, vitamin C, uh, pre-workout, I don't want to see, let's say, uh, maybe creatine. I don't want to see creatine here in the list. So how can I read it off this result, this value? Basically, I can use as the filter array. I can select the information that I want to use. So everything again here in the products range, okay? And I want to read it off the creatine. So I want to use everything in the products, but uh, these things needs to be different, different than open quotations, creatine, for example, close quotations and then close parentheses. If I press enter here, you're gonna be able to see that uh, the creatine row is gonna be obliterated from my table. So let's press enter here. 
And as you can see now, I have everything but the creatine. And let's say I want to do something different. I want you to open this pivot pie again. Now I want you to see the creatine. So instead of using different, I want to use equal to creatine. The only thing that I want to see is creatine. Enter. And as you can see, I only got any result but the creatine. So this is how we can use the pivot by function in Excel with many different practical examples. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know. Comment down below. And I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.